Hey everybody, this is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team, and we're in Stockholm, Sweden here for JFocus, big Java conference in Stockholm, and I'm here with Niels Eliasson. Niels, welcome. Yeah, thank you. So, Did I get your name okay? Yeah, that was the uh, best pronunciation so far. <laughs> But well, we were practicing it a few times here, too. So, uh, Niels, I hear you're a compiler engineer. Yeah, that's correct. I work on the hotspot compilers. Okay, so tell me what a compiler engineer does. So, uh, I work... Uh, the, the compiler is a part of the hotspot JVM that translates the Java byte code to machine code. So, and the machine code gets executed by the computer. Okay, so what made you want to become a compiler engineer? Uh, it's kind of a... By chance, actually, uh, I started uh, doing uh, computer science uh, on uh, the Royal Institute of Technology and uh, somehow I got interested in uh, computer hardware and took, took the uh, computer architecture courses uh, and from there on uh, uh, I managed to get a thesis job at uh, BA doing uh, compiler work. Okay, and then BEA ended up with Oracle with after Oracle. a few years. I was thinking of Sun, but no, just, I just knew a lot of... Actually, I just knew a lot of people at BEA from Sun. So, but yeah, it's actually Oracle, right? Yeah, so that, that's the part BA that was uh, uh, Appeal Virtual Machines that did the J-Rocket. Yeah, uh, so bought by Oracle. And then we merged with, uh, uh, with the Hotspot team from Sun when Oracle bought Sun as well. Cool. Okay, so you're based here in Stockholm, and uh, do you come to this event every year? Uh, mostly, mo almost every year since we're in the vicinity. So actually, just across the river, right there, right? Yeah. So I've been speaking two times a few years ago and helping out when I can. So what's your impression of the event here as it's evolved the last few years? I think uh, I mean it's it's a very popular event. It sells out very quickly. Uh, good. I mean. Uh, as a compiler engineer, I don't touch the actual big Java programs that much, so it's good to have some uh, reality check and see what pa people are actually using and uh, what version they are on and uh, so forth. So, forth. Yeah. so you mentioned that you've done a couple of talks here before? Yeah, that was a few years ago about performance. Okay. So what other... What other um, you know, you've been here for a couple of days now for this event. Um, it's, I guess, about a thousand or so, almost actually, almost about two thousand people here. Um, you see, here in the booth, any sense of some of the conversations that people are talking about? Anything that is interesting this year? One of the things I noticed is that the VM Tech Summit here yeah. is almost like a track, right? But it's very, very popular, and people. It's a very, what's the word? Very prestigious. Um, where everyone was hanging out there, and it was like everyone, you know, who's into, into virtual machines was there. Yeah. Right? So that's something that's really interesting at this show. Yeah, that's that's the main reason I, I go here, for for yeah, but that that's where I can meet my my uh, well colleagues at the other firms doing uh, virtual machines and uh, or other uh, virtual machine languages. So it's very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting, and we don't have that many really good conferences to go to, so it's... Yeah. You mean here in Sweden? Well, in, uh, in the world. I mean, there, there are a few bigger university conferences, but they seldom focus as much on the virtual machine, and uh, uh, they're more theoretical while we, we're more applied. Is this just because it's just a higher-end thing, or is it just rare, more rare? We, we got... We get uh, confronted with reality uh, a lot more. So, what does that mean? The, like uh, f from the university point of view, they they can usually do when they test a new technology or try to evaluate something. They usually do a lot of assumptions uh, that uh, assumptions that make their uh, life a bit easier because they can uh, disregard uh, some some complexities. While we doing doing stuff for production uses, we we must support the entire Java stack. We we can't just think away the garbage collector or something else. So it's yeah. So how long, so you've been involved with Java for a long time now? If you go back to BEA, yeah. So. Any observations on the evolution of the K 
community uh, in the sense of we're just, you know, all the banners here say 25 years. So, I mean, this is, you know, this is the 25th year for this technology. Um, you've been around for a while as well. So, I mean, things have evolved just in your time, you know, that you've been involved. Anything interesting going on that you can comment on? Yeah, I think it's amazing that still the community is so vibrant still and the language is evolving with, with good speed. We've done great progress as well during this time and we're, we're a lot of exciting technology coming up. So it's, it's still fun to, to, to develop and, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, work on Java. Cool. I'm just at the corner of my eye looking over there just behind the camera. There's a bunch of desserts coming by, but usually I'm just worried about someone knocking over the camera. <laughs> um, so talk to me about compiler engineering. When I hear the term compiler engineer, I think of kernel developer. I mean, I think of more high-end engineering. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's, it's quite accurate. I mean, it's a, a lot of complexity uh, uh, to, to get things right. A lot of, uh, we, we, since we, have a, we must be very efficient uh, while still uh, performing extremely well, doing complex uh, transformations to really shake out the maximum performance uh, of the Java code. So when you, when, you do, when you deal with such complexity, one of the things I'm interested in is, is how engineers solve really, really hard problems. Mm. Not just trivial, superficial things or a bug here and there, but a deeply, deeply hard thing that takes weeks or months or whatever. Um, can you comment or just you know talk about how you approach problems because I mean the things that you guys are dealing with are so complex and I'm interested in the thinking process about how you guys actually go about this yeah I mean of, often it starts with ID then start small iterate uh, and so iterate with your colleagues yeah with colleagues or by yourself uh, you will always uh, encounter situations where you haven't expected uh, some behavior and, and all is open to, to, to finding out new, new obstacles and uh, so continuous. So continuous like this there and like an, so talk to a little bit about the iterative process because once you start here and you iterate you end at a different place yeah. right and I actually noticed this when I worked in Solaris the engineers would collaborate and they would actually end up in vastly different places from where they started. Mm. That's normal? Absolutely. And it's, uh, I mean, usually you perhaps start with, you, you have a hint that something is a problem, you measure, uh, try to find uh, uh, programs that uh, exhibit this problem, and then you try to fix it. Uh, you, you Often you find other problems that you're initial assumptions were completely wrong and then you spin off on something else and perhaps solve a simpler problem first because it's, it hides the actual problem. Uh, so is this something that comes natural to you or were you just interested in that you worked hard to develop the skill? Uh, I, I developed mo most of the skill, yeah. I think. Do you believe in sometimes it's natural for some people or is it you just got to work through these things? I think you, you need to work through it. You need to, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's attention to detail uh, and working like methodically and, uh, and continuously and just, yeah. Well, with, you know, with systems that are this high end and this important, I think you need that attention to detail. It's not trivial work, right? And so um, it's just a personal interest of mine. I mean, you know, as soon as you said you were a compiler engineer, I said, oh, yeah, I want to talk to him about complexity, mm. you know, solving things that seem, you know, unsolvable. Okay, well, Nils, um, Nils, right? Yeah, Nils. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad I got your name mostly right. And um, we'll see you for the rest of the day here. And maybe next year I'll be back as well. Yeah. And um, so thanks a lot again. And thanks to you guys. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.